are about to begin our second session under the theme promoting health and wellness through physical education and sport. Today, we have on the panel, we have Mr. Trevane Morrison, who is the National Physical Activity Specialist at the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Mr. Morrison can just wave. All right, great. And then we have, beside Mr. Morrison, we have Mr. Steve Davis, who is a principal lecturer here at the GC Foster College. And then to my far left, we have Mr. Dwight Stewart, who is an educator and fitness entrepreneur. All right, so how the session will go is that each panelist will have about five minutes to talk about a topic that I'm going to be introducing. And then after that, we're gonna be following up with questions and then we'll have a discussion. The audience can also ask a question. So if you have a question, we're gonna ask you to queue in the aisle and an usher will let you know that you can come to the mic and then ask the question. All right, so here we go. So we're gonna start off with Mr. Trevane Morrison and the title brief discussion that we're going to be talking about is the role of physical activity in national development over to you sir all right good morning everyone you guys sound very sleepy this morning good morning everyone all right so my name is Trevin morrison i am from the ministry of health and wellness i'm the national physical activity specialist now I see a bunch of bright students here in the crowd. I just want to see if one person can tell me what physical activity is. Who knows what physical activity is? Somebody? Anybody? Come to the mic. I have prizes. So tell me what physical activity is. Yes, you ladies in the, in the white right there. All right, tell me what it means to you. Yes. Come up to the mic. Come to the mic. Come to the mic here. Just come and tell me what it means to you. Clap her up, clap her up. All right, give, give me a name, your grade, and show to the school. Okay, so my name is Jazara Myers. I'm in grade nine. Um, big up to Immaculate. <laughs> so what I think physical activity is, um, the, movie, the movement of your body, basically. How's your bright, sir? Give her a round of applause. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to go to that gentleman over there, Mr. Morgan, and collect that prize for me. Ooh. Show it off for me, please. Show it off for me. All right. So, yeah, so we talk about physical activity. We're just talking about movement. Now, why we change to the most basic form? So, we talk about exercise, we talk about fitness. But the most basic form of all of this is movement, which is physical activity. At the ministry, we're trying to utilize the science of physical activity in order to change how we are as a people. See, if physical activity is used properly, we will have less diabetes, less hypertension, a lot, of, a lot of cancers can be prevented from being more active. If you are more active, your studies become easier because physical activity provides blood to the brain. More blood to the brain brings more oxygen to the brain. More oxygen to the brain enables you to retain more knowledge. It enables you to be more focused and it will eventually lead to overall better grades. As we are as a people, we have more things that stops us from moving. And because of that, you realize children in primary schools are weighing more than their parents. You realize children in primary school and high schools have diabetes, 
have a whole host of non-communicable diseases that could have easily been avoided from proper nutrition and being more active. Physical activity is used across the world as a way of managing a lot of chronic illnesses, of preventing most communicable, non-communicable diseases, and is used as a medicine. It's used as a way to ensure that their country develop properly. Because we don't move a lot, and because, for the most part, we are malnourished as children. Malnourished meaning you don't get the proper nutrients, the omega, the fiber that you need when you're a child in order for brain, your brain to develop. But if your brain is not developed properly as a child, after age four, five, six, seven, the only way for your brain to continue to grow is not nutrition anymore. You have to utilize activity. More movement can help you to be smarter. More movement can help you to be less angry, which then leads down to a reduction in our crime and violence. So I'm here today simply to implore to everyone here who want to study sports, sports science, physical education, those who are studying sports, sports science, physical education, to broaden your horizon. Think wider than just a track and field coach, a football coach, a personal trainer. The knowledge that you have can be utilized in so many ways in order to help a whole host of people. So you could be a personal trainer, but your personal training is focused on those with non-communicable diseases. Your science can be utilized to ensure that this country can reduce diabetes, which is one of the number one non-communicable diseases in this country. You, can, you have the knowledge to reduce it. So in closing, and when the questions come, we'll get more answers. Physical activity is the number one thing that we focus on at the ministry. Why? Because if you're not somebody who loves to exercise, doesn't matter. Utilizing everyday movement in order to ensure that you stay healthy, stay smarter, is why we have the caption, more moments, more memories, more life. All right, thank you so much. Can we give Mr. Morrison a hand? So we're going to be asking him a few questions, <laughs> right, following on the back of that. So he mentioned, you know, he spoke about physical activity, um, and he did highlight some of the issues that we face with. How many of us watch our TVs and we, we see the minister trying to get us to move more, right? Right? Yeah. And we know, for example, obesity has become a massive problem globally not just in jamaica but the data in jamaica says that one in two jamaicans was classified as being overweight that can be pre-obese or someone who is obese and i guess the first question i'd like to ask is how does the government of jamaica prioritize and promote physical activity as a key component of national development all right so as you can see the ministry have hired physical activity specialists. So we are people who specialize in activities. So part of what we do is we're trying to build self-efficacy. So we're trying to help you to understand what your body is supposed to be like. And it's not only about how you look, about how you feel. So we, in, we give you enough knowledge so you understand what it, is that, what it is that you're looking out for. So we don't want to be reliant on a trainer. We don't want to be reliant on us for information. We put you in the right direction. So when we come out and we um, have health fairs, and you can speak to a specialist and do an assessment, based on your assessment, we can base, better guide you in terms of, okay, this is what you need to do in order to be healthy. All right, thank you for that response. I guess on the back of that, you mentioned that the ministry goes out and they have the health fairs. So what other initiatives or policies are in place to encourage and facilitate physical activity? 
especially since we have teenagers here today and young adults among this population group. All right, so we take, we have something called a settings approach with what we do. So it's not just physical activity. We have physical activity, healthy eating, and getting your health checks. And that's, those are the three things that are Jamaica moves. Because you need a balance with all of those to ensure that you're at your healthiest. So for schools, we have Jamaica moves in schools. And for physical activity, we have those three five-minute breaks that you're supposed to do during the day, which some schools are very compliant with. And we also advocate that you should incorporate at least one hour of physical activity during the week outside of PE for schools. For the workplace, we have workplace wellness programs that will go in and assist the workplace in um, having a more healthy environment. So we maybe you can afford to put in a gym. If you can't afford a gym, then we'll ask you to close the elevators on Wednesdays so everybody have to take the stairs. So there are different ways that we try to assist workplaces in terms of making your staff healthier. For the communities, we work with community development um, associations or the different agencies that, that, that governs communities in order to put in more parks, walking trails, or have police on routes to, to ensure that those who are walking on the road are safer. So those are some of the steps that we try to take to help people to be more healthy. All right. So Mr. Morrison spoke about five minute breaks. We have been sitting for five minutes. I'm going to ask Mr. Morrison to lead us in doing some squats in the chair. Let's all stand to our feet and make the, the activity become right, so real life. We'll meet in the middle. So there's two things. And I don't know if any music over there. To show you how simple physical activity is and why it is that we can easily incorporate it into our day to day life. Most of you here, we are students and teachers, or we work at a desk or work sitting. So we're gonna sit right where we are. Are we all ready? So we're ready. Upright in the chair. And we're gonna start with just putting the hands up and down for 10. Ready? Up. Now, we're going to reach to the side. So, and simple just to end, sit back in your chair, one leg up, kick it out, down, up, down, down, and these are things you can, you can do while in class, you can do this while working. It doesn't change anything, especially if you're trying to study and you don't have that energy, you can't focus. You just do a bit of movement and you're all good. You want to get the heart rate up, you go to your front edge here, and all you have to do, just to like, up and down, count, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. That was an exercise, right? So that's how simple it is. What we're trying to promote, and I'm sure what Mr. Morris is also trying to promote, is that we need to reduce our sedentary time, right? That's the time we spend not doing anything at all, right? So how do we become active? Many of us can't leave the decks. We're in the class for most of the day. So you can incorporate simple, Moves like these that we have just done uh, to make ourselves more active. We're going to be committed to that. So it's not just the walking, but how to turn sedentary time into moments where we exercise. I guess the final question for Mr. Morrison is, what are the challenges or barriers hindering the widespread adaptation of physical activity lifestyle in Jamaica? And what are some of the measures that can be taken to overcome them? Uh, there are multiple and we are slowly doing it. So part of the, one, of the, one of the reasons for those, for example, working is lack of time. So we, again, try to teach you how to incorporate physical activity into what you do at work. So if it's as simple as standing up at work. At school, 
we do the breaks. The barrier there is most teachers don't have that buy-in. So what we're going to do in the future is we're going to equip students with the knowledge to ensure that they know what the breaks are supposed to look like and they can, they can initiate those breaks in, those, in, in their classes to ensure that it's being done. For the community, again, part of it is the infrastructure and the safety, and we try to work with different agencies to ensure that that is being done in those places to see how best we can um, have people moving. All right. Can we just give her a hand clap for Mr. Morrison? This is a very big problem, right? The data is very, sh it's very accurate. The last time the government of Jamaica did a survey, 82% of Jamaicas engage in low physical activity levels. 82% of those that were surveyed. So it's a quite a big problem, right? We're going to move on now to Mr. Steve Davis, principal lecturer here at GC Foster College will be speaking to us for the next two to five minutes about holistic well-being, integrating nutrition and lifestyle factors. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I would like to start by saying Mr. Morris got the best part of the presentation in that he spoke about physical fitness or being active. Um, before I get into my presentation, I would like to ask a question. Have you ever come across an athlete who is the best at their game, but when he get close, got close to that person and to have a conversation, the person was rude or ill-mannered, or you came across a, 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 a star that you have rated, but your behavior was not what you were thinking of. You, you were thinking that they would have been nicer. So when we speak to wellness and well-being, it's, it's a comprehensive program encompassing fitness, your social life, your emotional life, your spiritual life, your occupational life. Um, many of you might know some students in your schools who are the brightest students in terms of academics, but in terms of behavior, or you might have a student who's a footballer or a netballer, but in terms of behavior, in terms of the socialization, it's not what would have expected of them. We want them to be better. So wellness has to do with all spheres of life. I want to get back to Mr. Morrison's presentation and let you know that, and those of us who are seated here, our learning begins with the physical. We learn how to cry, what muscles are needed for crying. We learn how to creep, what muscles are needed for creeping. We learn how to get milk from our mom's breast. It requires the use of what we call a motor unit. The central nervous system must provide instruction for the appropriate muscles to work. So physical activity should be the foundation of our development. When we add to physical activities the way we live, what do I mean by this? It, we are in a troubled setting because as life gets better, quote unquote better, what we mean by that? Our financial status has improved. Our way of life is better. Then there are certain physical things that are cut out of our everyday life. We don't wash with our hands anymore. We have the washing machine and the dryer. We don't walk anywhere again, we drive. You can hardly find a home in Jamaica now without access to a vehicle to take them where they want to go. So, because of that, we're going to have certain lifestyle, what, I don't want to use the word diseases, but certain lifestyle risk factors that will determine how long we live, how healthy we live, how well we live. And here at GC Foster, we say a sound mind in a sound body, and I say it the other way, we need a what? Sound body in order to have a sound mind. And after we have the sound body and mind, we need now to develop good relationship with our peer, relationship with our peers, our parents, those who we come in contact with daily. Because it has no sense for me to be the best at whatever I do, a good runner, good footballer, good student, but you are rude, you, you are antisocial, you're going to be sad. It brings back to memory, um, I don't know those of us who know Robin Williams. Robin Williams was one of the premier comedians. 
but sadly, he passed away through suicide. So even though he was making the world happy, he himself was not one of the happiest persons. So in our lives, we want to be physically prepared. We also need to be socially prepared. We need to be mentally prepared. And we need to be occupationally prepared. Wherever you work, you should have good relationships with those you come in contact with day by day. Um, lifestyle, it is our aim. Your students here, and in the beginning, your parents wanted to go to the school of choice. So the emphasis now becomes the GSAT results, or the, this, it's not GSAT anymore, it's PEP results. And in my days, it was what? Common entrance. Common entrance results, so that you could go to the choice school. And then after you go to the choice school, sometimes you have to go to the choice even class in order to get the choice subjects so that you can get the choice profession. When that is done, we have forgotten the physical, we have forgotten the social, we have forgotten the mental. And because of this, we live sad lives. So even though we have achieved in certain spheres of life, we are still lacking in other important aspects which lends itself to an all-round developed person that we can say we are well. Those of us who believe in, in God can say, it is well with my soul because I am spiritually well, I am physically well, I am occupationally well, I am mentally well, and I am emotionally well. Um, it is a challenge, it is easier to talk about than to achieve. Because one is not, more, is, is, is not more important than the other. So we need to develop balance. Earlier, Mr. Marcel said, the schools, because of the academic base, you do not have time. For instance, physical education is done what, once a week, maybe for an hour or 45 minutes. The World Health Organization is asking us to do something physical for one hour, six days a week. In my days, when we used to run up and down outside and play on the street, it used to be four times a week for 20 minutes or three times a week for 30 minutes. But because our lifestyle has changed, we have become what we call more developed, more advanced. Certain physical aspects of our lives have diminished. And because of that, we are leading to earlier mortality rates, you're finding heart attack in younger people. Once upon a time, heart attack was predominantly a male thing. But now, it is basically equal for males and females. You didn't have it in young people. It's now in young people. Because of the lack of that physical aspect to our lives. So, even though we are young, we should make this pledge to ourselves. I am going to be nice, so I'm socially acceptable. I am going to be physically active so, that to, so as to reduce the level of stress that school can bring, that life or jobs can bring. I will spend some time to myself looking at my spiritual self. And spiritual here is not necessarily talking about religious spiritual um, life, although it should be, but it's talking about this quality within me which says that I should live well with my peers. I should have this spirit, we say, treat everyone as I would like to be treated. After that, we have the other aspects. Our lifestyle, I, 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 I have a video, I don't remember all of it, which says that when we were poor, we eat vegetable from our garden. When we become a little more affluent, we go to an expensive restaurant to pay for the same vegetables that we eat at home. So no longer we have the backyard garden. No longer we, we plant something in a flower pot in order to be able to feed ourselves. We go out. And then when we go out to eat, we don't even have a good social gathering because we spend more time on the telephone, texting, and on social media rather than having a good family conversation or a good gathering conversation when we go to eat. So it's challenging for us but we must have it within our heads somewhere along the line in order to live healthy for longer. Because what exercise does, what exercise does,
it does not prevent us from getting old, but it reduces the rate at which we get old. We have in physical education what we call our chronological age, that is age by birth, and we have our biological age, that is how we look. Sometimes you may say to someone, I am 60 years old, and they say, no, you're not 60, you don't look like 60, you look like about 40. And the next time we say, I'm 40, and they say, yeah, they don't want to tell you, but when they're going to say, you're 40, and you look like 60, so physical education, physical activities, good social interaction, emotional interaction, stress-free lives can slow down the rate at which we get old. So we can live healthier for longer. All right. Um, I don't want to ask if you have a question because the moderator will do that. But as, you, as I close, I am free to, you are free to make your questions and I'll be willing to answer. All right, but just want to give Mr. Davis thanks for uh, that very entertaining um, and sharing that discourse. I guess just want to follow up with some of what you have said. Um, as a principal lecturer and somebody who works within the educational space, uh, how does physical education, how does the physical education curriculum addresses the broader goal of promoting overall health and wellness among students? Physical education by nature deals with the physical, the social, the emotional, the mental, and the nutritional aspect of our daily lives. However, the shortcoming that we have, like I mentioned earlier, physical education class in a school goes for maybe, for the most part, an hour or two hours. And where you have two hours, the classes are doubled. So one time per week for physical education, it's not necessarily enough to bring it out as adequately as it should have been. I was told by one of our past students uh, that in England, some schools, what they do, each student before they can graduate, they would have to walk to run at a 5K. So for every PE class, they would spend 20 minutes on the treadmill because before you graduate, you would have to be able to do a 5K, whether walk or run a 5K. So. I, I would have had the privilege of going to Brazil, and Mr. Morris mentioned it uh, already. But everywhere in Rio that you went, there are parks for the elderly, for the young, that they can go into the parks, and they, 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 you have different types of machines that they can keep themselves healthy. So in our school system, mm -hmm. we have a P program, we have PE at Cape level, but it is geared primarily towards the academics, okay. not necessarily towards health and well-being. All so right. I think we need to put more into it in terms of time and, and curriculum. Okay, so I guess what is coming out here, and considering that we are the institution as it relates to physical activity and sport, um, is that there has been, probably not intentionally, but there has been some amount of regression in terms of physical activity being more prominent in schools and considering the challenges we have where it's about what, one in every three child in Jamaica is obese, um, that requires serious attention that physical activity is once again given its rightful place within the school population. I guess the final thing I'd like to potentially ask Mr. Davis before we move on to Mr. Stewart is how does, how can we, considering where we are now, how can we, again, collaborate with health professionals and experts to integrate um, more wellness components within the curriculums within schools? I would have gone to a conference earlier, la late last year, and I heard some good news. And the news is that at the early childhood level, the curriculum will be going back to play and learn. So the emphasis in the early stages of development will not be so much on the, 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 the academic aspect of it, but the kids will be encouraged to play and learn as they play. It, it, it's challenging because every child or all parents would want their children to go to the best schools, quote unquote, not that a school is better than the other, go to the best school, get the best profession. So it's a balance that we have to strike, wherein probably 
the government should mandate physical education, more time for physical education in school. Because if, if, if there's a shortcoming in terms of the academics, there are, there are extra activities out there that parents can take up at a little bit. But if it is mandated in schools, then probably it would help to mitigate us against some of the, the, the lifestyle diseases that we are seeing. Um, just to go over a little bit, it's not just the lifestyle diseases, but it is talking about manipulative skills. It is difficult to find a, a student who is able to throw a ball accurately, to, to manipulate or to mitigate obstacles, to, to do a simple task that we took for granted back in the days. Simple task, throw, catch, you know, so it's more than that. And what it means is that we would not be able, when we get older and slow down, to stay out of accidents because we would not have learned certain things from an early age. So it's just more than disease. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Mr. Morrison wants to follow up on that. But I just want to highlight that when we talk about physical activity, and the reason why, you know, we talk about the lifestyle disease, and Mr. Um, Davis mentioned, we talk about dexterity issues that students lack, um, but also just general growth and development of our bones, right? So you find that by the time we get to a certain age where bone density starts to decrease, we are far more fragile than before because we're not very active right, when we were younger. So it's very important that we get active and stay active. Uh, just to add to that, I have learned recently that when we do weight training, we re recruit more neurons to function. So it is improving our nervous system through weight training. All right, so <clears throat> What I wanted to follow up on is that when we're talking about the curriculum and for it to include more physical activity, it needs to happen on every front. So college level, university level, high school level, primary school level. But curriculums oftentimes are geared based on the workforce because for the most part, you're preparing to work. Well, I can tell you eventually you have no choice because the workplaces are getting wind of how unproductive people are when they are when they have diseases from um, lack of activity and as a result they are ensuring that their staff are more active so that they can get the best out of them so eventually we'll have no choice but to have to ensure that when you're leaving to go to the workforce you are active so now we're just telling you, you need to get a leg up on that from now. All right. So we're going to move the conversation on by now inviting Mr. Duart Stewart, educator and fitness entrepreneur, to talk about innovative approaches to promoting health and wellness through education and sport. Good morning, everyone. My name is Duart Stewart, teacher and a physical education fitness trainer for Student Mobile Fitness. All right. Um, the body was made to move, right? Right? But it was made to move. Just imagine you sitting there for five hours. What happened to you? Huh? Can I hear you? Science pain, all these things, right? So your body was made to move. Good? So PE in, in school is very, very important. It's very important. So when you get that hour, or 45 minutes to do PE, Make the best use of it, right? Um, I look at some ways, innovative ways, we can um, use PE and also at home. Parent also, right? One of the ways we look, can look at um, having a fitness burst. For PE teachers here and principal is here, fitness burst for 15 minutes. I do about just to get the children um, be active, right? Our, our two presentation, presenters spoke about. Um, not enough time in PE class. I think there should be a lot more time for PE. I, 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 I strongly believe that. All right? 
So I think um, schools need to improvise, right? More time for PE. Some of the ways I said before, um, having fitness burst, five, ten minutes, even break time, right? A fitness burst. It we do it by the world of good. All right. Remember, I know. I always tell my client, medit uh, exercise is the best and cheapest medicine for the body. Exercise is the best and cheapest medicine for the body. No matter what illness you have. All right? Doctor will say exercise. Diabetes, hypertension, you name it. Exercise. So it's the best and cheapest medicine for the body. And next thing you can do, look at is, um, most of you have smart phone, right? You can have an um, app doing steps. Count your steps during the days. Most of us are really inactive. We sit all along on our gadgets, on our computer, right? And this is why you find most of the time students like you develop a form of diseases, diabetes, hypertension. Back in the days, person, um, student like you at your age, all right, diseases such as diabetes and hypertension, they didn't have. Why? Because they were moving. They didn't have cars as much back in the days. Right? You go to school. Walk go to school. Walk back. Right? Walk go to work sometimes. Now, taxi pick, up, pick, pick us up at our gate, drop us at school, carry us back at our gate. So the body did no form of movement through the day. And every day it builds up. Inactivity. Inactivity. Right? And most of the time we really reactive to certain things. It's when we have diabetes that's supposed to start to move. But you need to be more proactive. More proactive. Alright? Parent. I want to show this one out to you. Parent needs to be also more involved. Same like all you involved in terms of academics, involved as a student and uh, participate in some form of curricular activity. Very important. One, it develops their motor skills. Because like David spoke about, most of them can't touch a ball or a ball because their motor skills are lacking. Right? Parents can't even have um, exercise night at home for half an hour. All right? Exercise night. At home, get involved. So both parents and children will benefit from exercise. Follow? Um, let's think about is um, I'm coming. Yes, I spoke about um the smart spoon. Spoke about um having a fitness burst um during break time. Lunch time, whatsoever we should have. For PE class, also, I'm throwing out this for PE teachers. What they can in, uh, improvise or implement is have music at your PE sessions or your PE classes. It really pep up the students. The first 15 minutes, instead of telling a student to run two or three or four laps, you do aerobics for 15 minutes. You jump in for 15 minutes. It's way different. All right? It's way different. Because most of the time, students really don't really want to run. That's true. That's true, students. They want to run two or three laps. They don't. I know. But you doing simple jumping jacks for 10 minutes, that's way better than doing three or four laps. Jogging. Trust me. It's way better. But I'm closing now. So, But as I said, try and be involved in some form of curricular activity. In school, it helps you in both ways, right? Help your mental skills, everything, physical skill. It really helps you. All right, so try me uh, and be more involved. Thank you. All right, we give, those are some great nuggets, right? So who's gonna try the 15 minute burst? <laughs> All right, or we're gonna do the jumping jacks. So, you know, Mr. Stewart says, instead of the three laps, 
Maybe you can do a Zumba class, right, for 50 minutes and then get into the regular physical activity stuff for the students. I guess we just want to ask Mr. Uh, Stewart to tell us about his own experience and how he started Stewie's Mobile Fitness, briefly. Stewie's Mobile Fitness started out, um, it's my fiance, I started first, my first client, she lost 45 pounds in five months, so persons saw her on a, my, my um, social media platform, asking me to train them and things. So so long, I really, um, I really, okay, no. Put some more effort in my business. So now, through Mobile Fitness, we have our online, group online workout in the mornings, three times for the week. We have our boat camps at Maryland, run about in Clarendon there, and Saturday morning, on Wednesday evenings, all right? No questions? All right then, thank you for that. And he brought out some very um, salient points. You know, he spoke about online training. Uh, so that's a way we can go using technology. I just want for us to know that the children between what? Is the ministry, WHO said between what? Age seven to 17 needs to do at least 60 minutes or an hour of physical activity. The numbers don't get too caught up. Don't get too, you know, caught up in the numbers games. The data is clear. All physical activity is beneficial. And the data also, the research shows that even if you do not do the 60 minutes, doing 10 minutes per day, in many cases, is equivalent or has more benefit for persons who are not physical active, physically active. So someone who potentially does not do any physical activity, starts off with 10 minutes, gains quite a lot of benefit from doing just the 10 minutes. So let's get active, let's stay active. All right, so let's close off this session. I'm going to give each person, we're gonna just, let me just, let me pick number three. We're going to discuss, can, let's look at strategies promote, promoting inclusivity and ensuring that physical education and sports programs caters to the diverse abilities, backgrounds, and interests of our students. So let's just talk about strategies that, are, that will facilitate inclusivity and ensuring that physical education and sports programs caters to the diverse abilities, the backgrounds, and the interest of our students. One minute each. All right, so part of what we do already is even with all of our promotional materials, if you pay attention, usually it have someone who's overweight, someone slim, male, female, someone in a wheelchair, some, some level of disabled. So ensure that everyone knows that whatever we are talking about is for everyone. Yes, there are a few cases that we target specific audiences, but for the most part, we are inclusive of everyone. Now, the, great, the thing is we need assistance. We need everyone, all the personal trainers, all the PE teachers, and us at the Ministry of Health, once everyone is on the same accord and everyone is fighting for the same goal, then we can pool our resources, human resources, pool that knowledge together, come up with one strategy that we can then employ on the rest of the country. Because behavior, we're trying to change behavior, that's the, that's the main focus. But behavior takes time. But for now, the main thing is to empower the individual to understand that they can know enough to keep themselves healthy and active. All right, thank you, Mr. Davis. I would just like to say to the powers that be, to all who are seated here today, to look at physical education, not as ramping, not as playing, but as a most important aspect of our development and growth. I were told that our brain was designed to do one thing at a time. But I am now seeing some things, and I, I can't help but mention cricket, where a man is on the boundary, jumps, he catches a ball, he releases that ball before he goes over the boundary with the ball, then he comes back onto the field of play 
and he catches that ball. Even though he's doing one thing at a time, it shows that physical education would have helped him to be able to read the situation quickly, to sequence the situation, and activate the situation successfully. That is no ordinary feat. That shows a brain at its highest level. So those of us who think that physical education is just a waste of time, it is most important to allow us to be free after a stressful day, to get more brain, blood flowing through the brain, to get us to relax and to have fun and to integrate with our, with our peers in a meaningful and a happy way. So it is my understanding that we have goals, we have different, different aspects of life, but we should always ensure that the physical aspect becomes our foundation. And then, uh, Mr. Stewart. Yes, my strategy is, um, I think schools, the Ministry of Education, should um, implement more playtime in school. 50, I'm going to say 15 minutes each day, right, should be a time for activity. And they start from a primary school right up to the high school. And doing that, you, the, the student will innate these things, carry on to, um, to over their life, lifelong journey. All right? All right. So we're going to end this session like how we started. We're going to be doing 30 seconds of movement. Let's stand to our feet. Uh, Mr. Morrison. And Mr. Morrison will guide us in this session. Let's stand to our feet, All right, everybody. can stand. I need one person to show me what a simpler version of jumping jacks looks like. No, no, no. Come up top here, up top here. All right, so if you want to simplify jumping jacks, have knee issues, back issues, not wearing the right shoes, a simple modification is something called stepping jacks. So, 10 seconds, we're gonna go for jump, we're gonna go for stepping jacks. Our, what we're gonna do is, all right, let's go. Five, four, three, two, and. And then all you have to do is increase or decrease the speed based on what you can manage. So again, simple activities can go a long way in your overall health. Over all to right. you, Thank you so much. Let's do it together. Here we go. Let's stand to your feet. Let's make it a picture moment. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's do it again. One, two, three, and. All right. We're taking a five minute break into the next session, which starts exactly at 11.35. Stay right here. Okay. And Alyssa also. Good morning again. Can we have a round of applause for our panelists? All right. So on behalf of the GC Foster College, our sponsors, our guests, just like to thank our panelists for their participation today, and we really appreciate them. So, Mr. Morrison. Mr. Davis. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Stewart. All right, thank you so much.
All right? And then we're going to have Miss Russell come in to do some giveaways. All right, so I'm seeing that everybody is well pumped up and ready and rearing to go. And we have some giveaways before the beginning of our next session. Now, give a round of applause for our panelists. Give a round of applause for our panelists. All right, so you learned a lot of things this morning. And I'm going to be asking, I have some giveaways for you. Oh, Lord. Doc, can you help me with the questions again? Now we have a basket, a gift basket, and a bag to give before we introduce our panel. You have been a good, good audience. All right, so the first question is, give the name of the staff member and title of the song he did during the opening ceremony. Don't rush me. First person to stand, look out for them. The name of the staff member and the song, the name of the song that he sang. All right? All right. Now you're going to come up and you're going to tell me the name of your school. Tell me your name. You don't have an answer for me. All right, we have two persons. The name of the, quickly, quickly. Othniel Williams. No. No. Not Othniel Williams. Next. Mr. Paul Parkey. Hold a minute. Right there, I'll call you. Right. Don't, don't move. I'll, I'll come back. I'm in a function. Mr. Paul Parkey. And intentional. And intentional, not Mr. Paul Park. Lamont. Mr. Who? Lamont. Do we give her another chance? <laughs> All right, one more. Come, come. Mr. Othme, Othniel Lamont. And he sang, sang my bad, intentional. All right, so we have. <laughs> So we have for you a wonderful, wonderful gift bag from GC Foster College. All right. So we have one more question before we begin our next session. Who was the student who introduced the keynote speaker, Mr. Christopher Samuda? The name of the student who introduced Mr. Samuda. Gabriel Thompson. You're correct. All right, come here. We have, a wonder, we have a gift basket for you. All right, so we're about to begin our next session. We, I need you to stay. I need you to listen to everything that is said on the next panel. All right? So listen carefully, and you will win a prize at the end of it. Now... We have our next panel coming up and I